In this presentation, we explore the significant theme of identity in Hunani K Trust's prominent text from a native daughter. Using this unique theme, five students gather the courage to express their stories in the form of speech or spoken word about the importance of their own identity or cultural identity, which truly reveals that we can all relate to certain problems which deeply connects us as a collective. I came to New Zealand when I was four, having no knowledge of the culture or language. I could only speak my mother tongue of Hindi, and English was a stranger for me. I started schooling in South Auckland with no point of communication. I was alone. I was not the first of my kind, but the feeling of disconnect was tremendous. To think that being a Fijian Indian, growing in a South Auckland suburb, with no English speaking skills, I couldn't be more disadvantaged. I was wrong. The true disadvantage began when I had learnt how to speak English. Seven years after first coming to New Zealand, I had become the foreigner to my Fijian culture. I felt alienated from my culture, history and even relatives. So much so that even my Hindi sounded adulterated. But thankfully, I had family and friends who would speak the language with me. And in 2019, I had the privilege to travel back to Fiji. This was life changing. Landing at the airport, the air instantly felt welcoming and I felt reunited with my culture. Embracing my culture was a lengthy process and one I continue to struggle with. I had thought it was too late to express my culture. I had already betrayed my people for the sake of fitting in. What right did I have to identify as a Tongan? I am a young Tongan girl who has grown up with the responsibility as one of the elder sisters in my family. My parents taught me how to speak and write in full Tongan. I was raised in New Zealand and have been taught different information about my culture from school and by my parents. I have never visited my homeland, so I do not have any experiences of what it is like to live in Tonga or what it is like growing up in Tonga. I wish to one day travel to Tonga and experience the life there and strengthen my cultural identity. I am a full Samoan born in New Zealand. I grew up in the North Shore, the widest part of Auckland, and the only sense of Samoan culture I experienced growing up was listening to my elders speak to each other in Samoan. Not knowing my culture was not a big deal to me at the time until I moved to Samoa at 10 years old. I moved there with minimal knowledge of Samoa, which had me excited and nervous both at the same time. I lived there for about a year and learned more in that one year than I did in 10 years learning from my aunties and uncles. I was able to strengthen my cultural identity and continue to do so until I moved back to New Zealand a year later. I moved back to New Zealand and it was not long till I forgot about my culture and experiences from Samoa and my knowledge of the mother tongue were less prominent in my life and I lost my sense of cultural identity. I moved to South Auckland and being surrounded by others in the same boat as I allowed me to find my cultural identity again. Born and raised in a Samoan household, there were plenty of reminders of my culture. No matter how big or small they were, they were there. Like the ears that my mum would hang up on the doors or use as curtains, or the food that we would eat, like luau and bovi masima. But slowly, these little reminders of my culture started to fade as I grew up. My mum would speak my language less because of the fact that she wanted me to do so well in school. She sacrificed our language so I could learn English properly. But little did she know that as a result, I had lost a big part of my cultural identity. It wasn't until I had visited Samoa after many years that I had regained some of my cultural identity back as I had spoken and learned more Samoan in those three weeks than I had throughout the majority of my life. When I came back to New Zealand, I was determined to learn more about my culture and I refused to be categorized as plastic. I refused to sit with my family and fake laugh with them like I knew what they were talking about. I refused to know nothing of my culture or heritage and I refused to be the one in my family who can't understand. Can you imagine existing in a time where others saw you for more than the color of your skin, the shape of your body features, the clothes that you wear? Can you imagine having the ability to dream freely, to be able to walk the streets comfortably? I will admit, I once hid in the shadows of others in a desperate attempt to be what I thought was normal. 
I developed the belief that fitting in was the only way to survive in a world where everything was a competition, where you fought for what you wanted. I fought against my own self, identifying as anything but who I actually was. For too long, I had been made to believe that I should be ashamed to speak the native tongue of my people, to adhere to fundamental values manufactured by the brown hands of my ancestors. For too long, I allowed the voices and opinions of irrelevant people to dictate my own life. I let go of the control that I had, and all for what exactly? I was a coward. Throughout my life journey, I had finally realized how important cultural identity is to oneself. I am Samoan. I had learned that the waves in my hair reflect the history of my ancestors, embody my mother tongue, the food my people consume, our unique songs and elegant dances that bind us together to make a village. There is truly a beauty that has continued to echo through the oceans to keep us connected. So we shall challenge one another, the streets of our suburbs, which is where our race relations will thrive or die. How can we amplify the voices of our people? How can we tell our stories? Who are you? And I don't mind if I lose any blood on the way to salvation. Culture. Identity. Together as one. We are the ocean. So I'm gonna stand up, take my people.